Today we're going to talk about the resurgence of flight over water, exploring this new frontier in maritime technology. For decades, the idea of flying boats has captured the imagination, evoking images of graceful machines soaring above the water's surface. Let's think of Howard Hughes's uh, Flying Goose, or perhaps the English post-war Sanders Row. The company was convinced that its flying boat would win out in the end, because it would be a more comfortable way to fly, where passengers could relax in a lounge, dine in a restaurant, even sleep in their own private suites. Flying boats were already the giants of the skies, and there seemed to be no limit to how big and luxurious they could get. The world just needed to be convinced that flying boats really did have a future. In the 1930s, two distinct kinds of airplanes had emerged, land planes and seaplanes. The obvious difference was one landed on water and the other needed a runway. But in the 1930s, that was an important distinction, because many cities didn't even have airports and runways were often little more than dirt or grass fields. On the other hand, the world is covered in water, so flying boats could land just about anywhere. Onto the Hudson River at New York came a mighty German Dornier flying boat on its first transatlantic crossing. Another milestone in the rapid advance of commercial aviation. While the development of land planes was constrained by a lack of suitable runways, flying boats could grow larger, heavier, and more capable. And because they could reach parts of the world inaccessible to other planes, Flying boats opened up air travel to far-flung exotic destinations. For the lucky few who could afford it, flying boats became the preferred way to travel, earning a reputation for comfort and even safety. Because over the middle of the ocean, the ability to land in case something went wrong was a reason why many thought flying boats were superior, and it helped calm the nerves of uneasy passengers. While the golden age of flying boats has faded with the advent of jetliners and improved land-based infrastructure, that's fancy talk for airport, by the way, um, a new generation of these remarkable vessels is emerging, driven by advancement in technology and a renewed interest in efficient high-speed maritime transport. This resurgence is not simply a nostalgic revival, but a leap into the future with innovation and designs like hydrofoils and wing in ground effect, WIG that is, vehicles pushing the boundaries of what's possible on the water. Hydrofoils represented a significant departure from traditional boat design. Instead of relying solely on buoyancy to stay afloat, these vessels utilize specially designed underwater wings or foils to lift the hull out of the water as speed increased. This dramatically reduced drag, allowing hydrofoil boats to achieve significant high speeds and greater fuel efficiency compared with conventional vessels. The principle behind hydrofoils is relatively simple. As the uh, boat accelerates, the foils generate lift, similar to how an aeroplane wing generates lift in the air. This lift counteracts the boat's weight, raising the hull above the water's surface. With the hull clear of the water, the only resistance comes from the foils themselves, which are designed to minimize drag. This reduced drag translates into higher speeds and lower fuel consumption. Hydrofoils have been around for decades, uh, with early examples dating back to the early 20th century. And believe it or not, the Canadian who invented the telephone also invented the hydrofoil. In 1909, Alexander Graham Bell designed a working hydrofoil, and its flight also took place in Nova Scotia. However, Recent advancements in materials, hydrodynamics, and control systems have led to a new wave of hydrofoil development. 
Modern hydrofoils are often constructed from lightweight composites such as carbon fiber, which increases strength and reduces weight. Advanced hydrodynamic design optimized the shape of the foils to maximize lift and minimize drag. Sophisticated control systems automatically adjust the foils to maintain stability and optimize performance in varying sea conditions. One of the promising applications of hydrofoil technology is in high-speed passenger ferries. Hydrofoil ferries can significantly reduce travel times compared to conventional ferries, making them an attractive option for short to medium distance routes. The reduced drag also translates to lower fuel consumption and reduces emissions, making them more environmentally friendly. While hydrofoils lift the hull completely out of the water, um, wing-in ground effects, or WIG vehicles, take a different approach. These unique uh, craft operate on the principle of ground effects, which is the phenomena where an aircraft wing experiences increased lift and reduced drag when flying close to the ground or the water. Wing vehicles are designed to fly just a few meters above the water surface and take advantage of the ground, yeah, I know it's actually water, the ground effect to achieve high speed and long ranges with relatively low fuel consumption. The close proximity to the surface creates a cushion of air between the wing and the water, which increases lift and reduces drag. This allows wing vehicles to achieve speeds comparable to airplanes, but with significantly lower fuel consumption. Wing vehicles are not exactly boats, nor are they exactly airplanes. They occupy a unique space between the two. Um, they combine elements of both. They are typically designed with a boat-like hull for uh, waterborne operation and wings to generate lift when it uh, moves at speed. Some designs also incorporate landing gear, allowing them to operate from conventional runways. One of the most promising applications of wing technology is in long-range maritime transport. Wig vehicles could potentially offer a faster and more fuel-efficient alternative to conventional ships for transporting cargo and passengers over long distances. They could also be used for search and rescue operations, coastal patrol, and other specialized military operations. While hydrofoils and wig vehicles represent significant advancements in maritime technology, a more recent innovation has taken the world of water sport by storm. I hate them. Wing foils. This exciting new sport combines elements of surfing, windsurfing, and kiteboarding using a handheld inflatable wing to generate power and a hydrofoil to lift the rider above the water. Wing foiling is a relatively new sport, but it has quickly gained popularity due to its accessibility and exhilarating experience. The handheld wing is easy to learn and control. The hydrofoil provides a smooth and effortless ride above the water. Wing foils allow riders to achieve high speed and performance impressive maneuvers, making a thrilling experience for both participants and spectators like me. The development of uh, wing foiling has been driven by advancements in materials and hydrofoil design. Modern wings are made from lightweight and durable materials, and hydrofoils are designed for optimal performance and stability. The combination of these technologies has made wing foiling accessible to a wider range of people and has opened up new possibilities for water sports. So what does this mean for the future of flight over water, the resurgence of flying boats, the development of hydrofoils and wig vehicles, and the emergence of wing foiling is all pointing to a renewed interest in flight over water. These technologies offer a range of benefits, including increased speed, 
improve fuel efficiency, and reduced environmental impact. As technology continues to advance, we can expect to see even more innovation and new designs and applications emerge in the years to come. The future of flight over water is bright, with the potential of uh, revolutionizing maritime transport, water sports, and a variety of other industries. Whether it's high-speed passenger ferries, long-range cargo transport, or exhilarating water sports, the new uh, generation of flying boats and uh, related technologies is poised to make a significant impact on the way we interact with the water. I'm Alan Stokel. If you found this video informative, please like and uh, subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it means everything to me, as this is how YouTube helps my channel grow. Fair winds, my friends. Thank you.